Well, the Kaduna State Chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Reverend Joseph Hayap, is joining us on the news for more on this. Good evening, Reverend Hayap. Thank you very much, and uh, good evening to you. It's sad we're meeting on this note again. This is the situation. Every time I'm on here, I'm to speak about another sad experience. Can you give us a bit of background to this? Because not so long ago, over 100 children from your church were kidnapped, and now we're looking at worshippers 66. Give us a bit of overview back yeah, to all what of happened was that on sunday the 31st of october that's exactly one week ago there is a church emmanuel baptist church in kakao daji kakao daji is just three kilometers away from either gonengora or sabontesha or nmpc so it's just a suburb behind those three communities i have mentioned uh, the church held what they call a sing-song service Normally, annually, the choristers used to organize sing-song service where they would invite other guest singers to come and sing. When the service was just about ending, as we were told, they were just collecting the final Thanksgiving offering. Then these God men appeared in, good, in large number. First, they went to the children's church. Then they moved to the main church. They surrounded the church. And when people saw them, there was panicking and confusion. So they opened fire. One man was killed instantly. Uh, few sustained injury, but one sustained critical injury. That was why last Sunday or Monday, the story out there was that two people died. But the, the truth is that only one person died. The other person was taken to hospital. He did not die. Uh, he's still in the hospital. And 66 so, of them were taken away? So or? then we started having confusion about the number. We were not so sure until Tuesday before we got the exact number of people that were taken away, and they are 66. Those 66 include pregnant women, nursing mothers, oh people aged, and youths, and children. Well, we are now waiting to see whether they are going to call for us to go into kind of discussions with them. Then they released a video on Wednesday night. In the video, they showed those people seated and they were molested or they were uh, asking them to speak so that their Christian brothers would hear. Uh, I remember a very famous senator in our state wrote something about that video. He said the bandits are not just kidnapping people to ask for ransom, but they are also asking them, uh, kidnapping them to molest them and uh, rubbish their faith and their identity. Well, this is part of what we are facing. So. We saw that video and we are still making effort to see what can we do, how can we get these people back. What did they the next want? Thing what we have got they asked for? Have they asked the for anything? Thing, yeah, they did. First, they asked for foodstuffs and others. Uh, where we were still working to get all those things to them. Then we got calls yesterday that they shot five of them and two died. Three sustained serious injury. The fact about it is that they selected four young men or five young men. And none of, none of them is above 25. They are between 20 and 25. So they shot at them. You can see, I don't understand why they did that. But two died. The three that are in the hospitals are still young men. So they didn't touch the women. They didn't touch the old men. But they just go for those good age young men. To when just you, finish when you said those in the hospital, which hospital and who took them to the hospital? No, 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 no. Of course, when it happens, they have to call and inform the community that they should come and carry some of their men. So the community came and the security were uh, informed when they saw dead bodies. And they are in a hospital that I don't think for public consumption, I need to mention the name of the hospital. But they are in a hospital in Kaduna. In Kaduna. The president of the Nigerian Baptist Convention yesterday had to speak with the governor. He, according to the president of the Nigerian Baptist Convention, he just apologized for the unfortunate thing. Personally, I have spoken with the IG this afternoon. We've called all the relevant security agencies to talk with them. Uh, they've explained to us their, city, their uh, situation. We have to just find a way of ensuring that we treat our members and then bury those who are dead. And then we are appealing that the 61 who are still with the bandits, whatever can be done, let it be done so that these ones, no one among them should die again. You know, when the children were kidnapped some time ago, you did say something. You made some very shocking statements. You said the bandits 
were in charge, that they were in control, they were given the terms. And then you also said that the state governor did not, have not helped in any way. Is that still the situation? You see, the bandit seems to understand the weakness of Kaduna State Government. The bandit also is playing on that weakness on all of us. Because if I tell you honestly, one of the claims of the bandits for shooting those people was that for the few days or five days they kidnapped those people or one week, that government didn't talk to them. You and I know that we do not want our government to speak with bandits because for our government to speak with bandits, then we are compromising something about the security of our state. But for the bandits to now make such demand, they're just playing with the situation and then they use it to cause us pains, they use it to kill innocent citizens, they use it to steer up sentiment. And the reality is that government have really not done enough because we've never asked government to negotiate with bandits. All we want is government to secure the people. It took government two days before they even come out publicly to say that uh, those 66 people were kidnapped. The fact is that I remember that when BBC asked me on Monday and I shared the story and BBC tried to reach out to the police and reach out to government, they were acting funny as if nothing has even happened in this state. So it was like a story we are saying that never happened until Tuesday before they came out to commiserate with us for the death of those ones that died that day and then for the taking away of the 66 people. So I sometimes don't even want to waste much of my time talking about what government can do and just say, look, the federal government is directly responsible for protecting lives and properties. What the federal government should act and act responsibly. I don't want to go to details of the who do we call yesterday, what do we say yesterday to the various powers in government from the IG to the SS and to everything, I knew yesterday was a very bad night for me because this incident actually happened yesterday, Saturday in the afternoon, but we were managing and trying to find a way of securing, first, protecting the ones that are still alive with the bandits before we even make this statement outside. Until this evening or earlier today morning that the president of Baptist have to announce it in one of the church, then I have to come up openly to tell the world that yes, this has happened. We've been battling with it since 1.30 yesterday to this evening. Okay, uh, Reverend Hayap, yeah, you said the government is not securing the people, one of its, the major roles that any government should provide to the people. My question now is, what is, can, both the state chapter and the national chapter doing to secure the people in the north, especially in Kaduna State? With, with all that's been happening, what, what steps have they made to increase the level the, of security the, the, the they're providing. That the best step we can take is what we've been doing. Number one, educating the people on taking personal responsibility for their security and security of their places of worship. Number two, crying out for government and security agencies to act responsibly. You see, if we ask the people now to go on self-defense, if we ask the people now to protect themselves, we are going into it's an anarchy or a situation of anarchy because we have said this several times. You know, government will just hide on it and say, Oh, they are calling on people to fight, but you are not protecting the people. How long will the people? But I do remember, Mr. Hayab, that uh, I can't say specifically now, but one of the ministers had said that the people should protect themselves instead of, instead of crying out all the time. Yeah, we keep saying that, but we have to understand that we have a country. We have a country and we have a constitution. Is the constitution of Nigeria saying all of us should be protecting ourselves? If that is what they want, then everybody first. We should go amend our laws and also allow everybody to own a gun. At the moment, you know, the laws we have do not permit me to own a gun. And the process of even getting a licensed gun is difficult. I'm from Kaduna State. I'm from Southern Kaduna. I remember many times when bandits come around and kill people in southern Kaduna when the youth get angry and become agitated and go and carry dagger or carry some den guns and knives and cutlasses the army will just come and search their homes and now parade them that they've got in gun runners well in reality these are just people trying to protect themselves so you have a situation here that you want to help yourself but the system could now use your help to indict you, to cause, to call you a name that Nigerians will not even ask questions and assume truly that you are out holding gun and you are killing people. I have also read on pages of newspaper how someone in the farm that a bandit or a headsman almost killed him and he succeeded in taking the dagger of the headsman and killed the headsman who was to kill him. But the court is now sentencing him to life or to death. 
So you, this is the situation of Nigeria. In in in, in Adama State, this thing just happened about two weeks ago. You could Google that story and you'll find it. So we have a situation where our laws have been manipulated to protect criminals. Our laws have been manipulated to protect those who are killing innocent citizens. And the law that demands that citizens should be protected is not being invoked. So that is the condition and that is the situation we have. The fact is that just come on expressing our view that our people have been killed, our people have been abducted, our people have been kidnapped, is sometimes being viewed by those in power as if we are raising or we are adding tension to the community. Reverend Haya. Weeks, asking or carrying weapons, it will be bad for our country. I, I, I can't say how sorry I am enough about what's happening. Unfortunately, Thank time you. is not on our side, so we have to wrap this up. Just wishing you and everyone involved the best, and everyone in Kaduna, indeed, the whole of Nigeria. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for your time. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel, and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.